Hi viewers, the question you see in this screen is a question from previous year UGC net commerce examination. Here we are asked about the policy instrument which should be used in the period of depression and we are given with four examples. So this is a question related to fiscal policy. Now we will not be able to tackle this question unless we know more about this concept and a mere knowledge about what is a fiscal policy or, or the objectives of such policy will not be enough to answer this kind of question. Now, we will be discussing this question when it comes to the fiscal policy. Before moving on to the fiscal policy, we will have to know about monetary policy. So this is a video all about monetary policy. What is a monetary policy? A monetary policy is a process by which the government, the central bank or the monetary authority of a country controls the supply of money, availability of money, the cost of money. So the monetary policy is being exercised by three authorities which is either of the three authorities which is the government or the central bank or the monetary authority of the country. And the impact of such monetary policy can be seen in either the supply of money or the availability of money or the cost of money. In short, the monetary policy is manipulation of monetary instruments such as open market operations or bank rates or marginal requirements or reserve ratios by the central bank with the objective of bringing down an economic stability along with growth in a country. Now a monetary policy may be of different types like expansionary policy or contractionary policy or accommodative policy. The first one is expansionary policy. It results in high money supply. The word itself says expansion. So it is done at the period of recession. Why an expansionary policy is being chosen by the central bank? In order to combat the unemployment prevailing in the economy. And it is done by lowering the interest rate. Now when it comes to the contractionary policy, it is exactly opposite to the expansionary policy. Wherein the central bank tries to lower the money supply and it is done to combat the inflation that is going on in the country. It is done by charging high interest rate. Now the last one is accommodative policy. Here the only objective is to create an economic growth. So this are the types of monetary policy that is expansionary, contractionary and accommodative policy. Now let us see the objectives of monetary policy. This is somewhat similar to the objectives of economic policy which we discussed in the previous video. But there are some variations like the first point says the safeguarding it aims at safeguarding the country's gold and forex reserve. Now the monetary policy has effects on certain elements on various elements like reserves or the price level or the business cycle employment or balance of payment. So the monetary policy of a country is basically aimed at safeguarding the country's reserves. The second objective of formulating a monetary policy is uh, maintaining a price stability in the economy and as it is related to the gold and forex reserves, it aims at bringing a forex stability in the economy and it is also aimed at managing cyclical fluctuations. As I said in the economic um, objectives of economic policy, the monetary policy is one such part of economic policy which is aimed at ensuring full employment and BOP equilibrium. The overall objective of all these policies is generally accelerating the economic growth of a country. Now let's see what are the classifications of monetary policy. So there are quantitative as well as qualitative 
credit control measures. These credit control measures are otherwise called credit control instruments. And the quantitative or traditional credit control instruments include bank rate policy and liquidity ratio and open market operations. Under the qualitative credit control measures, we have direct action, margin requirements, consumer credit regulation, control through directives and moral suasion. So these quantitative as well as qualitative credit control measures are meant for different purposes. The first one is meant for regulating the credit creating capacity of commercial banks. It can cause the credit capacity of banks either directly or indirectly. And the other one, the qualitative credit control measures are meant to regulate the use of credit or to direct the credit in a particular way. Now, when talking about the quantitative measures, the when a central bank choose to open market purchase of securities or to decrease the minimum legal reserve ratio, it is giving more power and money in the hands of commercial banks to expand its credit creation capacity. And the opposite happens when there is a sale of security by central bank or when there is increase in the legal reserve ratio. So this SLR as well as open market operation is different from bank rate policy. Or bank rate policy is... Uh, something which does not have a direct effect in the cash reserves of the com commercial bank. A change in bank rate affects the cost of borrowing of commercial banks. Now let's get into the details of these. Firstly, let's have a look on the open market operations. Now the open market operation means the purchase or sale of securities. It can be short dated or long dated securities by the central bank. Okay. Now the objective of such an operation by the central bank is to inject liquidity or to eliminate the effects of export or imports of gold. So when the securities are sold by the central bank, it is purchased by the commercial banks as well as private individuals. So the money supply in the economy is reduced to that extent of purchase. So the open market selling of securities is done by the central bank during the period of inflation. On the other hand, when the securities are purchased by the central bank from the hands of commercial banks or customers, the money supply is increased in the economy. By the purchase of securities, the central bank is injecting money to the economy. And this is done during the period of depression. Now, the second one is SLR. Now, when it comes to SLR, it's the liquidity ratio which the uh, it is the amount of cash reserves which the commercial banks are required to keep with the central bank and it is a comparatively newer method of credit control and the cash reserve ratio that is to be maintained with the central bank is otherwise called variable ratio or variable reserve ratio and it is sometimes noted by r okay and the third credit control measure is the bank rate policy. Now the bank rate policy is the rate of discount at which the central bank will discount the first class bills or the rate at which the central bank is willing to lend money to commercial banks. Now there are varieties of interest rate in the economy. Like we have three kinds of interest rate. The first one is bank rate, which is the rate at which the central bank advances loans to the commercial banks. Next comes the market rate. So the market rate is totally different from bank rate. Market rate is the rate of interest prevailing in the money market. 
and the bank rate is always superior or higher to the market rate the next variation of bank rate is called the term rate it is the rate at which the commercial bank pays its interest to their depositors or customers now let's see how this bank rate operates in an economy if the central bank raises the bank rate the cost of credit goes up naturally the commercial bank will increase their lending rate also so this will increase the borrowing cost of general public and thus the demand for credit goes down thus the volume of bank loans and advances is curtailed to a great extent this will impact various spheres of the economy like the business and investment activities will be slowed down and it will create unemployment also however a fall in bank rate will lead to opposite consequences now this is called the cost of credit effect of change in bank rate there is also another effect which is called rusa effect or locking in effect of a rise in bank rate let's see what is that if the central bank raises the bank rate the commercial banks will be compelled to follow a rigid screening policy before lending to the general public and this will also reduce the price of securities owing to the fear of capital loss so the commercial banks will not be able to sell out the securities and they will be compelled to keep all their securities with them till the date of maturity this is technically called locking in effect of a rise in bank rate in simple words when the bank rate is raised the price of securities will come down and the commercial bank will not be able to sell their securities until the maturity of the security so this is what is known by rusa effect so this was all about the different kinds of quantitative credit control measures which comes under monetary policy qualitative or selective credit control measures are aimed at bringing a distinction between essential and non essential uses of credit it discriminate against the non essential lines of production these are helpful in tackling the sensitive spots of the economy without affecting the whole economy it is helpful in discouraging the unnecessary and excessive consumer expenditure it also plays an important role in correcting unfavorable balance of payment position and bringing the non banking financial intermediaries under the control of banking system The first selective credit control instrument is direct action. Here, the central bank of a country regulates commercial banks directly by prescribing various instructions or controls over their operations. These restrictions may include refusing to rediscount their bills. or refusing to grant accommodation or borrowings if they are considered to be excess of their capital reserve and charging a penal rate of interest over and above the bank rate the next control measure is the margin requirements it was firstly introduced in the country of USA it regulate the supply of credit for speculative dealings in stock exchanges here the margin refers to the proportion of purchase price of securities which is held by the commercial bank as collateral security for instance if a person wants to borrow credit borrow money on credit by pledging his security the bank will not be allowed to pay the full amount of market value of such a security the central bank says that bank should 
allow only a proportion of market value of security to the borrower or the purchaser so this is a practice done to check uh, have a check on inflation for instance the central bank may propose 40% to be kept in with the commercial bank and it may allow the commercial bank to lend out only 60% of market value of the security then comes the consumer credit regulation it was also originated in usa it seeks to control the consumer credit through controlling the higher purchase and installment system which is used in the sales of consumer goods or consumer durable goods so here the central bank fixes the down payment the number of installment to be paid by the purchaser as well as the maximum number of installments payable by the purchaser for example if i am about to purchase a mobile phone on installment they will have to check my credit score the seller will have to check my credit score and the amount of each installment the down payment and all other terms and conditions will be fixed accordingly the next one is control through directives here the central bank is prescribing certain directions towards commercial banks this may be voluntary agreement between the central bank and commercial bank it may be in written or oral form however if it is in the oral form it may not have any legal existence the last one is moral suasion wherein the central bank is making a moral appeal to the commercial bank for their cooperation and sometimes it has a good psychological effect but it has no legal sanction so these are all the instruments or measures which comes under qualitative credit control measures now this was all about the overall view of monetary policy there are some new concepts or terminologies in with regard to monetary policy which may not be known for many of us so the monetary policy consists of elements like policy instruments indicators targets and goals policy instruments is influenced by indicators indicators is influenced by targets and targets leads to the goals of monetary policy the first one that is this policy instruments that is what we discussed just now and the remaining elements like indicators targets and goals i'll brief this out in the next video because so much of information will create knowledge overload like things so let's see all this concept in the next video and hope you all understood this concepts and all keep supporting with comments and likes and subscribe to the channel for more updates and videos thank you